from the studios of Channel 12, I Believe in Miracles, with a message of hope and music of inspiration, with your host, Pastor John Michael. The composers of the inspiring gospel music on the program today were, include Albert Brumley, John W. Peterson, and Mosey Lister. It was Albert Brumley who wrote, This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. In other words, we're pilgrims, we're aliens, we're strangers in this world. We're nomads traveling to a better place where we can have a permanent citizenship. And the last stanza of that song goes like this, Just up in glory land we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. It's a peppy song. It's a joyful song. It's an upbeat, scintillating song. And afterwards, Marilyn, after Marilyn plays it, she will kind of calm it down and give us the comforting, um, the comforting uh, tunes of, of John W. Peterson's song, Over the Sunset Mountains. And the words go like this, Over the Sunset Mountains. Someday I'll softly go into the arms of Jesus, he who has loved me so. And again, toiling will all be ended. Shadows will flee away. Sorrows will be forgotten. Oh, what a wonderful day. Over the sunset mountains, heaven awaits for me. Over the sunset mountains, Jesus, my Savior, I see. Well, needless to say, there are, in the pilgrimage we make in life, there are times of serenity and peace, but there are also times of storms and sometimes violent storms. Sometimes it'd be nice to just sit down with the authors of these various songs and see what their thinking is, what experiences they brought into writing these songs. 
and um, I'd be curious to know what Mosey Lister would, or um, what Mosey Lister would say if he was asked about this. The song is entitled, and he wrote many of them, but this one's entitled, Till the Storm Passes Over. In the dark of the midnight Have I oft hid my face While the storms howl above me And there's no hiding place Mid the crash of the thunder Precious Lord, hear my cry Keep me safe till the storm passes by The storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow. Many times Satan whispered, There is no need to try, For there's no end of sorrow, There's no hope by and by. But I know that thou art with me, and tomorrow I will stand where the storm never darkens my skies. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forth. From the sky, hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. When this long Night has ended and the storms come no more. Let me stand in thy presence on that bright and peaceful shore in that land where the tempest never comes. Lord, may I. Passes by till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky.
I want to go back to the Sermon on the Mount. I want to go back there because uh, the Sermon on the Mount uh, needs to be translated into life in the valley. And you've heard me say that before, but I do want to repeat it again because that's where you live and that's where I live. That's where our children and our grandchildren live. That's where our parents and grandparents live. You know, every phase, every station, every generation, uh, every decade of life has its challenges. Sometimes they hit when kids are little. Did you hear about the young boy that was in his parents' wedding? He has a cancer, cancer, young cancer child. And within days after the wedding, he had passed out of this world. Yes, life sometimes hits hard and strong to the very young. Sometimes to the elementary students, sometimes to the high school students, sometimes to the college student. But every generation, every period of life, every decade of life may have its challenges that hit us hard. There are storms that are real. And they're the ones we face in the valley. And so I want to talk to you about this. We take the paragraph, this paragraph today, from um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 33 to 37. And I'm reading it from the, um, the Living uh, New Testament. It says, You have also heard that our ancestors were told, You must not break your vows. You must carry out your vows that you make to the Lord. But I say, now this is Jesus speaking, so if you have a red letter edition of the Bible, you'll see it's all in red. It says, But I say, do not make any vows. Do not say, by heaven, because heaven is God's throne. And do not say, by the earth, because the earth is his footstool. And do not say, by Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Do not even say, by my head, for you cannot turn one hair white or black. Just say a simple, yes, I will, or no, I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. End of the paragraph. Well, my friend, what does this all mean? Well, I'm going to give you my take on it today, and hopefully it'll be some things that are practical and, and helpful in uh, the decade of life you find yourself. God loves you. God cares about you. God's given you, you and me his word to help to guide us like a map to guide us through the pilgrimage of this earth. And I, just like a, a breath ago, I was a young boy, just... You know, my earliest memories, like when I was three years old. And here I am now, 75 years later. And a lot of memories in between there, aren't there? Well, it's gone faster, like Job said, it's gone faster than a weaver's shuttle. It was Corey Ten Boom who made this statement. She's the one who wrote The Hiding Place, survivor of the Second World War imprisonment and as she said the blood of Jesus never cleanses an excuse so I think the point of this paragraph is to get simple get down to earth take a look at your heart and find out what is the truth what is the truth for us to be able to speak and use our tongues in wise in humane, in kind, and in, in uh, truthful, uh, truthful ways. It's easy to cheat with the tongue. It's almost natural to cheat with our tongues. And he says, let's not cheat. Let's not cheat. Let's not take shortcuts. Let's not use excuses. Let's not uh, kind of get into this... Um, into a frame of mind where we make uh, words weasels and slippery and, and uh, we can bend them in whichever way we want. I see in these uh, verses there are kind of four levels for honest speech that we should look at. 
the first level is the heavenly level. It comes to spiritual honesty. The third commandment was, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord God in vain. In other words, our words about God should be true words, reverent words. The words are like in the prayer, the hallowed be thy name. Uh, they should be words that uh, glorify God and do not dishonor Him. They should be words that are in keeping with His word and with His will, with His commands. And as I've been reading through the Bible in the chron chronological Bible, I've read about the stories in, in Jewish history. And this is after the, you know, the times of the Babylonians came and attacked and carried them away captives. And Jeremiah is telling them about how, how that they've disobeyed. He said, don't even pray for them. Uh, God said, don't even pray for them because they're so off key. They are so dissonant. They are so... Um, uh, uncooperative with God, that they're going to go into captivity for 70 years, which happened. It's a historical fact. So this is in relationship to God. We've got to learn to be honest with God and not try to play word games. Uh, I like to do Sudoku. I learned that from my friend just a couple of years ago. And... Uh, it, it is a game that is unforgiving. You make one mistake and you're off track and either you've got to go back and get on track right away or you're not going to make complete the game. So it is with, um, with life. Excuses, when we hit them, we've got to find a backtrack. And God wants us to be honest with Him. He wants us to be truthful with Him. He wants our vows with Him to be to be those of integrity. But there's another level. And that second level, he says, is uh, on earth. It's called the footstool, the footstool of God. Heaven is the throne of God. The earth is the footstool of God. And uh, this has to do with business honesty. That's the application I want to make, business on honesty. Ah, it's so easy to create uh, illusions in do, dealing with business, with your boss, with your uh, employee, with your customers, with the public, and even in advertising. It's so easy to just kind of make it look a little different, a little brighter than it really is, a little more uh, attractive than really it is. And so here's the, here's the call. The call is, can you, can I be honest on this world in dealing with business affairs. Every day there's business. There's bills to pay. There are decisions to be made. There are choices to be made, purchases to be made. There are, um, uh, you, you know, this is, this is a challenge. How can I be honest and say simple yes and no and that my handshake is as good as my word. And I've read some of the legalese papers. Uh, and, you know, I say, what is this saying? I don't understand this. It's going to take lawyers to wade through this and figure it out. And we're not all lawyers. Wouldn't it be nice to go back to where we didn't need lawyers anymore. We just needed to be open and honest to go into our hearts. Jesus is trying to take us in the Sermon on the Mount into the heart arena and tell us to be honest, to be honest about lust, to be honest about hate and anger. And here he's saying to be honest about what we say, be honest about our words, our business dealings. I would like to see some of you men who are maybe bending the rules to reconsider, to go back to the simple life. You'll be able to sleep better. You'll be able to get along better with your customers. You say, well, why is, why is life turning sour on me? Well, maybe people can't trust you as much as they would like to trust you. So here we go. Let's, there's another level. The next level is by Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem is the capital where the king sat. And so I think about this, and then my meditation of it, I thought, well, this has to do with my, um, my civic words. We have a great country where we can speak without fear. 
It's nice if we speak with kindness. It's nice when we speak with respect. But oftentimes those words uh, go beyond that. Truth can go beyond that, I guess. But, you know, uh, to have honesty in regard to my civic duties with my citizenship, whether it has to do with, like Paul said, you know, pay your taxes. Nobody really likes to pay your taxes. And there are, you know, I guess there are ways in which you can fudge which are not legal. There's a ways with which we can fudge that are legal. And it is um, maybe a part of honesty is to find that distinction. But he says Jerusalem. Jerusalem's the, the, the major capital of the world. It's the throne of King David and the um, ultimately King Jesus and to have civic uh, integrity, uh, to be true to, to um, upholding uh, the pledge to the flag, to upholding our citizenship and its responsibilities, to taking seriously the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the laws. There's another step I want to take, and that is my head. He says, my head. I can't change whether my hair is gray or my hair is black. No, I have no power over that. I don't have power over these things. But he says, be honest. I need to be honest with myself. It was Bacchus that wrote this book called Telling Yourself the Truth. That's a profound topic because we tell ourselves more lies uh, than we can imagine. And that's where the excuses come in. What is an excuse? One man says an excuse is a skin of a truth stuffed with a lie. And just stop and listen. We, sh we should have ears to listen to ourselves. And this is where I preach to myself. I should listen to myself, listen to the tone of my voice, listen to my words that I say, listen to my excuses, and maybe I need to re revise how I speak. The paragraph ends with this reference to the evil one. Yeah, the evil one. Who is the evil one? The evil one is um, the liar the father of lies. If you look in John 8 and verse 44, it's Satan. The slanderer, he's a liar from the beginning. He was a liar in the Garden of Eden and he's still a liar today. He is, um, wants to pervert us from the truth. And even Pilate said in his own personal dilemma and confusion, what is truth? When I was a boy, I went to youth group. I was 12 years old when I could start to go to youth group. And every youth group meeting, which was before the Sunday night church service, every time we'd stand and repeat this prayer, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalms 14, excuse me, Psalms 19 and verse 14. 1914, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. It all starts with the heart. That's the message of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. Take a look at your heart. Get the mirror out and look at your heart. Take a moment to just relax and think. What is there in my heart that's good? And what is there in my heart that is not good? What is there of lust? What is there of anger and hatred that is not good anger. There is good anger. Be angry and sin not. There's the anger that makes us run away from temptation. But then there's the other kind that wants to get even, that wants to get back. So my friend, when it comes to your vows, your vows to your wife that you stood before a minister or a justice and you made a pledge does that mean anything? Does it mean anything? Look into your heart. 
Are your words selfish? The cross of Christ stands as a way to find forgiveness. The blood of Jesus Christ does cleanse us, not from excuses, as Corey Ten Boom said, but from sin, our honest admission that we are sinners and that we have fallen short of the glory of God and that we need a Savior to cleanse us once and for all but also to cleanse us day by day as we walk in this earthly pilgrimage, waiting for what's beyond the sunset. It's a good time to pray. And it'll be easy if you're alone. You can pray out loud or even pray in your heart. Maybe you'd like to say this prayer, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, may you use your word to edify us and to bring us to Jesus again today. Amen. Well, don't forget, there are many opportunities in life to um, grow and to become a blessing to others. We want to be a blessing to you. We surely do. And we want you to be blessed and become a blessing to those in your family and to those in your neighborhood. We hope to see you again next week. Until then, goodbye and God bless you. You've been listening to program number 2270. If you have any comments or inquiries regarding this telecast, please address them to Miracles. P.O. Box 128, Mankato, Minnesota, 56002. And refer to program number 2270. I Believe in Miracles is a ministry of Grace Baptist Church in Mankato.